Hello, and welcome to Chemists in the Hood. Today, we're going to be synthesizing elemental bromine. This is an advanced procedure and will require all glass distillation apparatus. The required materials, both reagents and glassware, will be run across your screen as I read them. You will need potassium bromide. You can substitute sodium bromide if you adjust the numbers accordingly. Calcium hypochlorite, again, you can substitute bleach, sodium hypochlorite solution, if you adjust the numbers accordingly. 10 molar hydrochloric acid, sodium thiosulfate. For glassware, you will need a 250 milliliter round bottom flask with a ground glass joint, a three-way distillation adapter, a ground glass stopper, a Liebig or West condenser with ground glass joints, a 105 degree vacuum takeoff adapter, a 100 milliliter receiving flask, and a 250 milliliter beaker. Additionally, you will need latex rubber or vinyl tubing for your condenser, and you will require a Pasteur pipette and a condenser pump and the requisite tubing for your condenser. Before we begin, this procedure will produce copious amounts of toxic, corrosive bromine vapor. This procedure must be performed outside or in a good fume hood as bromine vapor is heavier than air and your fume hood fan must be able to remove it effectively. The first step for the procedure is to generate the hydrobromic acid in the round bottom flask, which we will use to produce the elemental bromine. First, add 50 grams of potassium bromide to the round bottom flask, and add just enough water to dissolve the potassium bromide with vigorous stirring. For this, you can either use a magnetic stirrer if you have one, or you can swirl the flask or use a glass stirring rod. If necessary, you may heat the water to encourage more potassium bromide to dissolve. The next step is to add a stoichiometric quantity of the hydrochloric acid. In my procedure, I call for 10 molar hydrochloric acid, but what I have is 10.42 molar hydrochloric acid. You should adjust your quantities accordingly. In this case, I will measure out 40 milliliters of the 10.42 molar hydrochloric acid into this glass graduated cylinder. With vigorous stirring, I will then add the hydrochloric acid to the dissolved potassium bromide. At this point, any undissolved potassium bromide will react with the hydrochloric acid and will be converted into hydrobromic acid. This will leave a precipitate of potassium chloride in the flask, which we will then removed by vacuum filtration. You didn't get to see it here, but I set up for vacuum filtration using a Buchner funnel, a filter adapter, and a fritted glass filter. In the filter is a potassium chloride precipitate. There is some dissolved potassium chloride in the hydrobromic acid that's in the flask, but that will not affect the next part of our procedure, so we will not remove it. This filtration could have been performed using a glass funnel and a filter paper, or you could simply have decanted off the liquid from the precipitate. The precipitate will not affect the procedure. At this point, you're going to want to conduct the experiment either outside or in the good fume hood of which I spoke. You will now add the calcium or sodium hypochlorite to your hydrobromic acid. As you can see here, the hypochlorite will oxidize the hydrobromic acid to elemental bromine.
what you see here is the entire experiment having been taken outdoors to complete. Um, what we have done here is set up for simple distillation. I do not have a heating mantle, so instead I'm using my hot plate and a steel bowl filled with copper covered BBs, which actually do an excellent job of conducting heat. I have my condenser hooked up with ice water, and we will begin to heat to distillation. Here we're a little bit further along in the distillation procedure. Um, unfortunately, because we were out in the hot sun, the condenser was not working quite as well as I would have liked, and so more bromine vapor is exiting the apparatus through the vacuum takeoff port than we intended. However, we will add an ice bath to the receiving flask and further chill the condenser water to recover as much bromine as possible. We are now near the end of the distillation procedure. The liquid bromine has begun to settle into the receiving flask. The ice bath that I have placed the receiving flask in, as you can see, has condensed a fair amount of the bromine liquid. Unfortunately, the condenser was not doing a fantastic job, so we did lose rather a lot of bromine as vapor. Um, in the final step, I disconnect the apparatus, clean it out, and I recover the bromine in the recovery flask and ampule it. I will now show you the completed ampule. As the cleanup and ampuling of the distillate is not particularly interesting, um, and ampuling will be in its own separate video. I present to you the completed ampule of bromine that we recovered from this reaction. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Please rate, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.